We still in the book of Joshua, y'all, chapter 19. Y'all bear with us a little bit. We're going to get right back to this. If y'all got the smartphones, just Google in Joshua. You should be able to pick up a signal, Joshua 19, and y'all kind of read along. As soon as we get the right signal on that Wi-Fi, we'll be able to have it on the board as well when we read along. Yeah, we just paint the picture, set the foundation so y'all see why the Lord destroyed and how the light of judgment had to be administered. Right? It went too far. Yeah, everything, the judge, everybody. The whole town robbed me and caught you coming through there. <laughs> this is only a little piece I took. Yeah. yeah. They didn't talk to you with it, huh? Right, let's get to Jazz, 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 Jazz. chapter 19, verse 1. And the city of Sodom had four judges to four cities. And these were their names. Sarat in the city of Sodom. Sharkad in Gomorrah, Zabnak in Abna, and Menon in Zeboim, and Eleazar, Abraham's servant, applied to them different names, and he converted Sirach to Shakrach, and Sharkad to Shakrurach, and Zebnak to Kepzobin, and Menon to Max Logan. Sound like foot Mass Logan. And by desire of the four judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the city. See that? And by, the, and by desire of the judges, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah had beds erected in the streets of the city. Beds. Come on, bro. And if a man came to these places, they laid hold of him and brought him to one of their beds and by force made him to lie in them. Beds in the streets of them. <laughs> Come on, bro. And as he lay down, three men would stand at the head and three men at the feet and measure him by the length of the bed. And if the man was less than the bed, these six men would stretch him at the end, at each end. And when he cried out to them, they would not answer him. Mm. And if he was longer than the bed, they would draw together the two sides of the bed at each end until the man had reached the gates of death. Mm. And if he continued to cry out to them, they would answer him saying, thus shall it be done to the man that cometh into our land. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and when the men heard all these things that the people of the cities of Sodom did, they remained from coming there. They refrained from coming there. <laughs> and when a poor man came to the land, they would give him silver and gold and, and cause a proclamation in the whole city not to give him a morsel of bread to eat. So we'll give him silver and gold, but don't give him no food. Can he buy no food, no? But he got silver and gold. Come on, bro. And if the stranger should remain there some days and die from hunger, not having been able to obtain a morsel of bread, then at his death, all the people of the city would come and take their silver and gold, which they had given to them. <laughs> Scandals. I'm going to get a poor man silver and gold, but deny him to buy the food. They had cell phones then for the world of It's the kingdom of it's, it's, it's the kingdom of wicked. It was flourishing at one point. Right, right. Why well, everybody go to bank? Right. 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 Verse 9. And those that could recognize the silver gold which they had given him took it back. And at his death, they also stripped him of his garments. <laughs> and they would fight about them. And he that prevailed over his neighbor took them. They would after that carry him and bury him under some of the shrubs in the desert. <laughs> so did all the days, so did they to all the days to any one of that came to them and died in their land. And in the course of time, Sarah sent Eleazar to Saul to see Lot and, and inquire after his welfare. Right, Genesis 24, Eleazar was Abraham's servant. Stupid. 
but he was a servant of Abu Dhabi. So being that he was a steward of Abraham, Sarah was like, look, go on down there and check on his lot. Go on down there and check on uh, bro, because uh, it's, it's very wicked down there. Now what happened to Eliezer? Come on, bro. And Eliezer went to Sodom, and he met a man of Sodom fighting with a stranger. And the man of Sodom stripped the poor man of all his clothes and went away. Mm -hmm. And this poor man cried to Eliezer and supplicated his favor on account of what the man of Sodom had done to him. And he said to him, Why dost thou act thus to the poor man who came to thy land? And the man of Sodom answered Eliezer, saying, Is this man thy brother? Or have the, so have the people of Sodom made thee a judge this day? That thou speaketh about this man. It's got to do with you. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got to do with you. Mind your business, right? <laughs> right. Verse 16. And Eliezer strove with the man of Sodom on account of the poor man. And when Eliezer approached to recover the poor man's clothes from the man of Sodom, he hastened with a stone. He hastened with a stone, smote Eliezer in the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> now he bleed. Yeah. Now Eliezer bleeding because he doing what's right, standing up for the uh, for the poor, the innocent. Right? He gets bricked, though. He get hit in the forehead. Get out. Come on. And the blood flowed copiously from Eliezer's forehead. And when the man saw the blood, he caught hold of Eliezer, saying, Give me my hire. For I have rid thee of this bad blood that was in thy forehead. For such is the custom and the law in our land. Like, look, you bust his head in the white meat, and he tell you, pay me to get rid of that bad blood. That's why. Y'all see, y'all starting to see why Sodom and Gomorrah had to be destroyed. Like, like judgment, everything is turned upside down. By the point. How you make him bleed? Right, but then charge him to get rid of his bad blood. Right. Come on, bro. And Eleazar said to him, Thou hast wounded me and requires me to pay thee the hire. And Eleazar would not hearken to the words of the man of Sodom. And the man laid hold of Eleazar and brought him to Shatra, the judge of Sodom, for judges. And the man spoke to the judge, saying, I beseech thee, my Lord, thus has this man done. For I smote him with a stone that the blood flowed from his forehead. And he is unwilling to give me my heart. And the judge said to Eliezer, This man speaketh truth to thee. Oh, the same judge. Right. <laughs> that judge is Julie now, boy. <laughs> That's the same judge. Right, that's <laughs> judge. Give him his hire, for this is the custom in our land. And Eliezer heard the words of the judge, and he lifted up a stone and smoked the judge. <laughs> in your land, give thou unto this man what I should have given him. <laughs> when thou didst decree. Uh. And Eliezer left the man of Sodom with the judge and he went away. Alright, let's come on down. Come on down. Uh, verse 26. 26, read on down. Verse 26. <laughs> and Paltilith, the daughter of Lot, saw this man lying in the street, starved with hunger. And no one, no one would give him anything to keep him alive. And he was just upon the point of death. And her soul was filled with pity on account of the man. And mercy. mercy. That mercy, right? Come on. And she fed him secretly with bread for many days. And the soul of this man was revived. For when she came forth to fetch water, she would put the bread in the water pitcher. And when she came to the place where the poor man was, she took the bread from the pitcher and gave it him to eat. 
so she did many days. Right, showing mercy. Everybody else ain't showing mercy. Lot daughter decided to show mercy. All right, come on, bro. And all the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wondered how this man could bear starvation for so many days. Like he ain't dead yet. He should have been dead. All right, come on, bro. And they said to each other, this can only be that he eats and drinks. For no man can bear starvation for so many days or live as this man has without even his countenance changing. And three men concealed themselves in a place where the poor man was stationed to know who it was that brought him bread to eat. Mm -hmm. Then Paltit, the daughter of Lot, went forth that day to fetch water. And she put bread into the pitcher of water. And she went to draw water by the poor man's place. And she took out the bread from the pitcher and gave it to the poor man. And he ate it. And the three men saw what Paltit did to the poor man. And they said to her, it is thou then who has supported him. <laughs> and therefore he, and therefore has he not starved, nor changed in appearance, nor died like the rest. <laughs> and the three men went out of the place in which they were concealed, and they seized Paltit and the bread which was in the poor man's hand. <laughs> and they took Paltit and brought her before the judge. And they said to them, Thus did she do. And it is she who supplied the poor man with bread. Therefore did he not die all this time. Now therefore declare to us the punishment due to this woman for having transgressed our law. She, punishment for being merciful. Yeah. See that? Right. Show you the mindset of the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, come on, brother. And the people of Sodom and Gomorrah assembled and kindled a fire in the street of the city. And they took the woman and cast her into the fire, and she was burned to ash. Jump on down, brother. Jump on down. Let's finish it off. Verse 44 on down. Verse 44. And the Lord was provoked at, at this and at all the works of the cities of Sodom. For they had abundance of food and had tranquility amongst them. So they had plenty of food on deck, tranquility, Lord provoked. Things going good for y'all, y'all still wicked. Lord, like, oh, okay, judgment time. Come on, brother. And still would not sustain the poor and the needy. Righteous men look out for the poor. The day you look down on homeless people, people that are less fortunate. That ain't what men of the Lord are supposed to be doing. That's right. You're going to be looking out for the poor. Blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. That's right. All right, you got some problem? Just like America, you know, they got all these restaurants and they, they throw on so much food away. Yeah. There's so many people that's hungry out there. Yeah. Instead of throwing it in that garbage bin, won't you just take some of that down to the hood? Oh, and feed people. Yeah, you know yeah, like, like that. The they one brother, you post that on Google about going yeah. to tax free money. Eighty-six and a half million dollars the church is bringing every year. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's enough money to feed everybody in America with food stamps and to solve the homeless crisis. Say that again. Right. Eighty-six and a half million dollars tax-free money come through the uh, Sunday doctrine churches every year. Eighty-six and a half million. That's enough money. That almost say a little undervalued. Yeah, it do, it do. But just, just that number alone is enough to feed. Uh, I mean, to house every homeless person in America and to pay for the food stamps right. mm. in America. Yep. They deposit $50 in the bank every month. That was in that was in That was like me. That was the city. That was the city. And if y'all don't believe it, just Google Joe Osteen's church rock. Y'all brought yep. three weeks ago. $600,000 cash from that Sunday service, but that's not counting the checks, the money order, and the credit card. Wow. That was just the cash from one Sunday, just the cash alone. One Sunday, they robbed the church. We know that. Y'all, we're going to move on and finish it off. And that's just that 86 and a half that they accounted for it told us about yeah. right, 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 oh, that's what Brooks said, what he was saying, he like, yeah. you know this understanding, right, right, right. right. <laughs> come on, let's finish, here we go, y'all, and in those days, their evil doings and sins became great before the Lord, 
And the Lord sent for the two of the angels that had come to Abraham's house to destroy Sodom and its city. And the angels rose up from the door of Abraham's tent after they had eaten and drunk. And they reached Sodom in the evening. And Lot was then sitting in the gate of Sodom. And when he saw them, he arose to meet them, and he bowed down to the ground. And he pressed them greatly and brought them into his house. And he gave them victuals which they ate, and they abode all night in his house. And the angel said to Lot, Arise, go forth from this place, thou and all belonging to thee, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. See, so it ain't, it ain't like Sodom and Gomorrah could have been cured. You feel me? It was to the point of no return. Right? Even Abraham asked him, if you find this many, will you spare it? He's like, yeah, I'll spare it if that many is fine. Mm. If that many wasn't fine. Showing you is a period of time when grace runs out. Right? And then the Lord got a clean house. That's right. Get rid of that which is filthy. You do it every day. Don't you clean your house every day? Huh? Won't you wash your dirty clothes? Why? For what? Why? Why is it filthy? Who told you that? See, you do that judgment every day. You get rid of the, the uh, undesirables and you keep the desirables. You do it every day. The dusty house, dust this house, clean, clean up, wash the dishes. That's right. Doing some spring cleaning. That's right. See, so you do the judgment the Lord going to do anyway. You get rid of what you don't want and you keep what you want. That's right. And you do it every day. So when the Lord is in the judgment, there won't be no excuse. You perform this daily. Huh? You even, even down to the clothes you pick to work. No, I'm going to wear this, and I'm going to discard that. So you got the same type of judgment, and you administer it daily. But when the Lord enters the judgment, like, oh, hold on. What are you doing? You mean what are you doing? You get rid of the undesirables all the time. That's right. So the Lord will do the same thing. All right, we finish. For the Lord will destroy this place. Mm. And the angels laid hold upon the hand of Lot, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hands of his children and all belonging to him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Mm. And they said to Lot, Escape for thy life. And, get about her, boy. and he fled and all belonging to him. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and, and upon Gomorrah and upon all these cities, brimstone and fire mm. from the Lord out of heaven. Mm. And he overthrew the cities all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city, and that which grew upon the ground, and a doe, the wife of Lot, looked back to see the destruction of the city. Now we know Lot's wife's name. We all used to say she yeah. ain't got no name. Yeah. Right. Her name is Ado. Ado. That's her name, A-D-O. Ado. The wife of Lot. Wife of Lot. You learned so many things. I didn't even know that. Right. We always say, you know what, she ain't even no name. Right. She got a name. He's just called Lot's wife, but in the book of Joshua, her name is Ado. All right, come on, bro. For her compassion was moved on account of her daughters who remained in Sodom, for they did not go with her. A lot of them had more than just them two daughters at the end of it. There was other daughters. One of them got killed. You know, one with the son in law. Yes. Right, right. Two son in law. Right. So these were the two daughters, but the two yeah, virgins. Yeah, two of them virgins. Right, those are the ones that never known them. Yeah. Right. Come on, bro. Verse 53. And when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt. And it is yet in that place until this day. Put that pillar of salt in that dictionary right there. Yeah. In Bible dictionary. Show the pillar of salt standing for y'all to think it's fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Still an example still still to this there. day. Yeah, still there. Yeah. All right, finish, finish on our down to the verse. Right here. I'm in verse, uh, verse, sir. Uh, uh, 54. And the oxen which stood in that place daily licked up the salt to the extremities of their feet. And in the morning it would spring forth afresh. And they again licked it up unto this day. And Lot and, the, and two of his daughters that remained with him fled and escaped to the cave of Adumalat. And they remained there for some time. And Abraham rose up early in the morning to see what had been done to the cities of Sodom. And he looked and beheld the smoke of the cities going up like the smoke of a furnace. We read that already early in Genesis. 
You see that? Same thing, but it's more detailed account. So now you can tell people, when you're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, it was more than just Larry on Leroy going through this. <laughs> it was a whole bunch of misdealing, uh, of false judgment, underhanded right. tactics going on. And for, the, for all of that, the Lord destroyed it. Not, even though that homosexuality is a major thing, not just for that, it was for all that he destroyed. All right? And Lot and his two daughters remained in the cave. And they made their father drink wine. And they lay with him. For they said there was no man upon the earth that could raise up seed from them. That lets you know it looked like a nuclear bomb hit that deal, man. It just said Abraham already was looking from afar. But from where they was there, they like, look, the whole world is in it. Then what they do, they get their dead drunk. It's another way you know the Bible is the truth. It even speak bad about stuff that you scared to speak of today. That's right. He even talked bad about his own people. You feel me? Treacherous Jews, stiff neck Israel. Right. Feel me? But when you get them with something else that's trying to pump up their own thing, they're going to just show you all the good things. Right, right, and then, right, right. Bible don't hide that he can show you. Look, look, look how this went off. Lot of daughters got him drunk. Mm. That's in the Bible. Yeah, that's in the Bible. Because it don't hide. It don't, it don't, it don't just show you the good. It's going to show you the ugly, too. So you can show it. No, I'm saying he had that yeah. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Nick, show, show me. Yeah. This is that, that picture that Malik was talking about. I know y'all probably can't see that. It's small, but it's still there. Y'all see that? It's on the lot. It's on the lot. And it's on this pictorial Bible dictionary. It's on the lot on page 493. That pillar of salt right there. It's right here. I don't know if you can get that on the camera. That's good. I'll say after you finish that verse. Yeah. And I can read yes, it. Finish it off. Finish this verse For off. they thought that the whole earth was destroyed. Mm. And they both lay with their father, and they conceived and bare sons. And the firstborn called they the name of, and the firstborn called the name of her son Moab, mm. saying, For my father did I conceive him. He is the father of the Moabites. So you got the people that's, that's more science, temple, gospel. Mm -hmm. They all teach they come from the Moabites. Mm -hmm. uh, they say they're yeah, from Moab. Mm -hmm. Moab means he is from his father. Right. Right? But his father is his grandfather. Mm -hmm. So you get them to go, okay, you you a Moabite, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, so your granddad is your dad. <laughs> they teach that we the Moabites. That's right. You see that? Come on, bro. And the younger also called her son Benami. Ben who? Benami. And the Negro called him Benami. Benami. Come on, bro. He is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. And after this, Lot and his two daughters went away from there, and he dwelt on the other side of Jordan with his two daughters and their sons. And the sons of Lot grew up, and they went and took themselves wives from the land of Canaan. And they begot children and were fruitful and multiplied. So y'all see that the first thing they did, they got them drunk. Because if this was a righteous act for rebuilding the kingdom, they never would have got them drunk. But they got them drunk because they knew Lot would have never went for that. Because nowhere from Genesis to Revelation or any writings that the father was ever on daughter or the mother was ever on, on a son. You would have brother and sister in occasion, but you would never ever have father on daughter or mother on son, it ain't never been permitted. So when we talk about the virgin birth, and they say we talking about the immaculate conception, no, that's son on mother. They getting close together. They knowing one another. That ain't never happened with the virgin birth written in each scripture. So we're not talking about the immaculate conception when we talk about the virgin birth. That's two different understandings. And that's what you have to do is ask them first. When they say, you talking about the first verse, you talking about the immaculate conception. No, we ain't. Ain't that son and mother love? You won't find that in the Matthew through nowhere. You won't find it. Nowhere were mother and son unless there's wickedness abounding. Just like this. And that's why they couldn't enter into the congregation of the Lord up to the tenth generation. That's the reason they can't enter in. It has to be ten generations that remove that sin out of their look and out of that before somebody reach back and say, no oh, man, that's that father and daughter love thing. 
You know, and that's what Ben Amy Carter is actually doing. He's actually doing that. Over in the land. His daughter is showing him about his two children. You can look out there now. His, his son died from a rare disease, and it got on the my, my saba is my abba. My grandfather is my father. My grandfather is my but this is the level of wickedness that these little small kingdoms go to when they run out of all the women. <laughs> no doubt. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12 next and show some mercy. And it shows some judgment, right? It show mercy so we can understand the whole spectrum of our God. So today we tend to be too far left and too far right. That's right. Instead of balanced out in the middle. Lord got judgment and mercy. Mercy and judgment. That's right. Too far in any direction is dangerous for you. Because you'll be in La La Land with too much mercy. Mm. And it'll be a free fall and everything goes. No matter. You can't say nothing. You can't judge me. You get to hear all that. You can't say nothing. You're trying to blind out of stuff. Yeah. Or, if or if it's too much judgment, there's no, there's no avenue for nobody to learn. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you see it, cut his head. But then he never learns. Right, and, and you will hear this, let him when I sin cast the first song. I'm not condemning you. Right. I'm just telling you these examples. Right. Gonna be a witness to you whether I tell it to you or not. Mm -hmm. This is not about casting the first stone because it ain't nobody on earth that could throw a stone. But when you read Deuteronomy 17, the stone throwing was for whoever was not guilty of that crime because it was stone thrown. Somebody was throwing the stones. It was a practice. Somebody was put to death when we read all through the law. Yeah. But if you committed adultery and the person caught in adultery, you couldn't be one of them that throw the stone because that would make you a hypocrite. It was somebody else free of that sin that could throw them stones. But even uh, Brother Paul in Romans, the second chapter, Say, how you judge somebody when you're doing the same thing? That's right. You feel me? You're not saying the word can't come out for you for correction or whatever, but it lets you know, check yourself. That's right. How are you condemning sodomites and you were sodomites? Right. That's right. Any long. All right, well, what are you saying? How you condemning thieves and you were thieves? That's right. I can have a quiz when the trial. Go ahead, brother. I'm ready to Matthew chapter 7. I'll start verse 1 right quick. It says, Judge not. That ye be not judged. For what, he said, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. And why behold thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eyes, and behold, a being is in thine eyes. See, so he's saying you not only trying to tell him he shouldn't be switching around, but you got a whole switching outfit at home. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with stiletto. And let you know before you bring correction, make sure you ain't doing it either. Right. Hey, uh, go ahead, what you done with that? No, I say verse 5, thou hypocrite. Mm. First cast out, boy, this is a kicker here. Take notice of this verse right here. This is a kicker. Thou hypocrites, first cast out the beam out thy own eye, and then, and then shall thou see clearly, hear that? See clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. That's right. What? Right. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Hey, grab Romans 2 for me, bro. Y'all, so see what he's saying? The word hypocrite means the saying, don't do something. I'm telling you not to do it, but I'm doing the same thing. Right. So that's why the word hypocrite came in there, because you're going to see in there, judge righteously, judge righteous matter. And this is what he's talking about, the balance judge. When you weigh in both sides of it, we have to make those judges. You have to make those judges for your children. You, you can't just let them have their way and say, well, no, I don't want to say nothing. These are the children that you have to wait. You know, when you hear a child going, get out of my room. <laughs> get out of my room. All these my room. Romans 2. Romans 2. Let me read it. 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 Let me read
Hold it down, y'all. Yeah. 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 Right. What do you say? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> See what he's saying? He's saying, look, the law, because of what Romans say, is saying, because the law say, well, if you believe the law, then that's what you're going to be judged by. We don't believe the law, so we ain't going to be judged by it. So what is that belongingness? Right. All right, well, let's read this real quick. Hey, we're going to Matthew 12. We're going to Matthew 12. Yo, we read that Romans 2 for me. Romans 2 and 3. So we'll start at verse 1. Okay. Hold on, y'all. We're going to write to Romans 2 to explain what Brother just uh, brought up. There, Romans 2, 2 verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, mm -hmm. O man, whatsoever thou art thou judges. Who my bad? Whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another. Thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judges does that same thing. So, so when he said, when he was saying, what he was saying, judge not that you be judged, clear it up right here, Romans 2, because you doing the same exact thing. Uh oh, hypocrite. Yeah, if that's the case, everybody be quiet and then can't nobody be wrong at all. You can't tell the little, little brother in the streets, get out the streets, you can't tell your children, no. You can't, you can't do none of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there has to be some type of discernment between what's right and what's wrong. It has to be. You feel me? So he's saying right here that if you're doing the same thing, how you telling him he going to be condemned and you doing the same exact thing? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, hit that verse 2, brother. Verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of Yahweh is according to truth. According to what? According to truth. So whatever, wherever you end up, in eternity. That's a true judge. That's right. Lake of fire or the heavenly gates. Why? Because the judgment of the Most High is true. All right, come on, bro. The judgment of Yahweh is according to truth against them which committed such things. Mm. And think about this, O oh man, that judges them which do such things and doeth the same. Right. That thou shalt escape the judgment of your heart. You think you're gonna escape the judgment of God? You doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness of forbearance. And forbearance. And forbearance and long suffering. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that the goodness of Yahweh leadeth thee to repentance. The, good, the goodness, the mercy of the Lord leads you to repentance. That's right. So he showed you that the Lord has judgment and mercy. That's right. You see that? Come on, brother. But after that hardness, thy hardness, thy hardness and impenitence, impenitence, impenitent heart, impenitent heart, hard head. Come on. Treasures up thou themselves wrath against the day of wrath and revelation. Of the righteous judgment of God. And you treasure up, you treasure up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Verse 6. Verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deed. What is a deed? Mm. Your birth. Right. Right. Lord will render to every man according to what he's been doing. That's everybody it means nobody's nothing for the judge. Y'all hear that? Nobody. All right, come on, brother. To them who by patience, continuous, and well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, Woo! eternal life. To them who by patient, continuous, and well-doing. Mm. Hold that endure to the end. That's right. You see that? Come on, brother. But unto them that are continuous, contentious, contentious, mm -hmm. and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulations and anguish. 
upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Upon every soul of man that doeth evil. That's everybody. That's everybody. Come on, brother. This way, all of y'all, of the Jew first, and also unto the Gentile. See? I mean, blessings to the Jew first, and then to the Gentile, curses to the Jew first, and then to the Gentile. See that? Nobody escapes the judgment of the Lord. That's just, ain't it? Yeah, it is. Come on, brother. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Right. For there is no respect of person with Yahweh. So there's no respect of person with God. You're not going to be able to pay him off and say, Lord, I was the great prophet, prince, jazzy chauffeur. Like, you don't mind. <laughs> so you go. Right. So there's no respect of person with the Lord. Male, female, Jew, Gentile. Right? Whatever you're supposed to be doing, you're supposed to be doing it. That's right. The Lord is going to reward everybody according to what they've been doing. There's no respect to persons. In other words, won't nobody be able to slide the technicality just because they got Abraham blood. That's right. right. You got to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. You got something? Yeah, you got a little precept. Book of James, chapter 2. That's right. Uh, verse 8. I start verse 8. It says, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, Thou shalt love thy neighbor thyself. You do well. But if you have respect of persons, you commit sin. And, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. The Lord don't have respect of persons. That's right. The day will turn the blind eye to what we supposed to say or what we supposed to administer. Because you cool with the brother. Hold it down, y'all. Or you cool with the sister or the brother. You won't say what needs to be said. Right. See, the Lord, he said, if you have respect of persons, you what? You said it. Now, you ain't supposed to fear nobody to the point where you're going to bring them the word and show them, like, look, we ain't supposed to be doing that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? For the this, this, that, these three, we ain't supposed to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do that because there's a respect of person or that's your favorite group. Can't be like that. Okay. Fin finish off where you're going so we can get this back to 12. Right? Verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Mm. For... He that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you are become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye, and so do, as they shall be judged by the law of liberty. Mm. For he shall have judgment without mercy, mm. that have showed no mercy. Hear that? Won't be no mercy for you if you're not showing mercy. Hear yeah. that? Yeah, we get out here and, and teach about what's coming and all that, but every day going to be a self-check for yourself. That's right. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, you know where you struggling at, where you weak at. You feel me? Nobody get to confessing up in here, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, I, I, mean, I know I, I, I slack at it and come up short at it, you feel me? You got to deal with that regardless. There won't be no excuse with Lord, you know I was kind of weak. In that area, you know my heart. Yeah, you better get it together. Get it together. Get it together. Thank you for his mercy because, I mean, hey, once judgment, once you enter the judgment, it's a wrap. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing. Fin finish off where you're going. We're going to start saying again. But he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoice against judgment. Mercy rejoices against the judge. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get this. Matthew chapter 12 is where we go. Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. Show the Messiah himself. We show some judgment to get some of this mercy. Right. So y'all understand clearly when somebody tells you, you can't judge me, you, you know, I can judge the matter. I'm not deciding. I can't decide if you go to the lake of fire. Right. I can't do that. So I can't condemn you you uh, by judgment. I can't do that. That's for the law. But I can show, show you and tell you what's wrong. And if I'm doing it, I got to include myself. Man, me and you gonna die. <laughs> yeah, or well, you know what I mean? Fly out. You let it be known. Like, you gotta come out with the correction though. That's right. And you told Ezekiel, let them know where they're they going off at. If you don't tell them, I'm gonna require it of you. Uh oh, right, right. You feel me? So it just means everybody gotta be have a self check. That's right. Together, you know what I'm saying? But you don't turn a blind eye to some wickedness. 
Like, it's all good. I mean, it's trying to blame. Don't say it. You feel me? If you, you saw it, but then somebody life was required. Then what? Man, I should have said something. First mind told you what? Say something. Why you ain't say that? That was your favorite group. Let's get to Matthew 12. Right? Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. Yes. At that time, Jesus, Yahweh shot, went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger, and he began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. The disciples hungry, right? Mm -hmm. Sabbath day, what'd you say though? Oh, dog, wait till the sun go down. <laughs> Man, what you say? I mean, look, somebody's hungry, starvation murder. Today, if you let a other law with it, you just like, oh, dogs. You just want to suck. Hey, 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 look, look, short. My little joker, number, number two. Right. Two y'all. Hey, my life, you got to suck it up to the sun go down, bro. Right. <laughs> That's right. Need to learn how to fast early. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see how the Lord operate because of the side that was seen. We know this. That's right. But let's see how he operated in the law. Verse 2. All right. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. So if they saying that, that means what? They got a law to show that what? You're violating. Right. right. They saying this is a violation of the law for eating on the Shabbat. This is what they say, right? Come on, brother. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was a hunger? And they that were with him. So we go into the history. No, no, y'all supposed to be top scholars and lawyers in this. You ain't never read that? Verse 7 to 20. David did his thing. That's right. Come on, brother. How he entered into the house of God and did eat the show bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, right. neither for them which were with him. But only for the priest. Because there's sacred laws put out in the temple every day for the priest to eat. Mm -hmm. Right? But these men been banging the war of God right here. Starving to death. Hey, need some food. You see that? That's right. So what do you do at that point? Do you show mercy? Oh, yeah. Is the Lord going to feed them? Or is you like, oh, no, no, that's only for the priest. So the brothers got to starve. And they been banging the war of God. That's right. This whole time. What do you do? Do you say, okay, no, man, wait till the sun go down. Do you say, get you some food, man. And Show some mercy. And when it was plucking that corn, that's in the law anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 we got it. Come on, bro. Right. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blamed? Mm -hmm. Never read that? Y'all write down Numbers 28. Let me see what he's talking about. Read on your own time. Go ahead, brother. But I say unto you that in this place, that in this place is one greater than the temple. Mm. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy. I will have what? Mercy uh -huh. and not sacrifice. Uh -huh. Ye would not have condemned the guilt. Mm. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. He's telling this to the top preachers of the day. If you knew what mercy was about, you wouldn't have been condemning the guilt. You putting the wrong people to death because too much judgment. You ain't even shown no mercy. Mm -hmm. You just condemning folk right off the bat. Mm, come on, bro. And when he was departed thence, he went into the synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand with him. Mm. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? <laughs> that they might accuse him. So now I think of your mindset on this one. Is it lawful to do righteousness on the Sabbath day? That's what they ask. Right. Is it lawful to do a righteous act on God's Sabbath day? They have been sold and slaved by tradition of men. They could even read the commandments of the Most High and show, even God Himself showed mercy. What did Noah find? Right. Grace. Grace. Another word for mercy. Come on, brother. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Hey, don't y'all do that. Your animal falls into the pit all the time. You take your garment off, throw your sleeves up, and get down in that ditch and get that sheep up. You do that. Right? Come on, bro. How much then is a man better than a sheep? Good question. If, you, if your animal is worthy to be loose from its uh, enslavement or its trap, 
or it's her condition is in, why this man can't be healed right here. Come on, bro. Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. Then says he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Verse 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, <laughs> how they might destroy him. See, they're trying to destroy the Lord for doing what's righteous. Right. See that? No mercy. See, mercy and judgment are two opposite ends of the spectrum. You, we as people need to be somewhere in the middle. That's right. We can't be too far either way. We need to throw everything off. Right? But you got to show mercy at the same time. But yeah, the Lord's a man of war. Yeah, we know all that for sure. And the Lord's going to burn by all of Yeah, for sure. But when he tell Jeremiah, he ain't just tell him to pull down. He's going to build up. That's right. See, that's the mercy for Build up. Yeah, we're going to turn down the lies and all that. But then you're going to be an example to replace what you just chopped out. That's right. You feel me? You ain't even doing that. You're just trying to destroy something. And then you ain't replacing it with a legitimate system that they supposed to be doing. Right. Right. Like the boy that I heard this Egyptology man, he just coming down here to discredit the scriptures. He got handled all praise to the most high. Yes, sir. But notice he didn't have nothing to replace even if he was to drop the scriptures. What are you replacing our worship with? What are we supposed to be doing? It wasn't no mercy in from the jump. Right. He just was coming to administer judgment and he overlooked he looked like Mike Tyson picking up that mouth. Oh, because the Douglas got on. He overlooked what it was. Tokyo thrashing. <laughs> That's it for that day. Let's go to first time. First time for 21. Read about day. Some more mercy. <laughs> Gotta have some mercy as well. So don't be in La La Land. Can't be in La La Land. If she's something that's old, that's, that's gonna lead. Somebody demise or whatever, or the destruction of say this down here, stand up and say something. That's right. You gotta say something, can't go quiet. What? I saw someone in 1 Samuel 21. Because Christ mentioned what happened with David, right? Let's go read about David. Why he's under the order of Aaron and see how mercy still was applied. That's right. You said what, 15? You said 15? No, no, no. Ah, ah, hold on, hold on, I got the wrong one. Hold on. Verse 1 through 6. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm tripping. Oh, yeah. yeah, 1 through 6. Yeah, 1 through 6. Yeah, yeah. tripping. My bad, Joe. Sometimes, sometimes you misfire. I see that dash in between us. Right, 1 no, dash 6. I show another example of some mercy. Then we get back to some more judgments as well. What's up? I'm showing you what it's all about. And even now, being that we're not killing nobody for being in violation of the scriptures, today all you're doing is warning them through the scriptures, via the scriptures. Like, look, uh, that can't happen in the kingdom of God. If you plan on being in the new Jerusalem, you can't continue in that vibration. That's right. You feel me? And that alone, uh, in a way, ju uh, judges or judges their spirit to where they're like, you know what, let me go ahead and get down. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the mercy that we're not killing them, but we ain't going quiet either. Hey, you know you can't do that against the kingdom of heaven. Mm. And that make you look for that cool side of that pillow. That's right. It do. It make you like, man, I couldn't even, could even sleep after them brothers was reading that. Mm. Speaking, I couldn't even sleep. Let me get up in here and do that. Why? Because the, the Bible is a spiritual book. And then it's straight be on your spirit to where you like, look, man, let me get on up and try to get myself together. That's right. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's what we're supposed to be doing, not going quiet. Well, you can't judge me, and you think that means there's no correction. That's right. Well, nobody's wrong here, and everybody's right. Do what you want to do. That's right. Why are we mad at Satan? Yeah. Why are we blaming it all on him? What are we even bringing that color? Why is there wicked men then? What are we going to church for? What they turn is that wicked? <laughs> right. But y'all, y'all just look out on the Daily Mail, y'all see that uh, Pastor Manning out of, out of all of New York, he got a church, and he got on this bulletin board outside the church, Obama has released the homosexual man on the black man. <laughs> so black women, get prepared, a white homo may take your man. And he's got this on the bulletin board. <laughs> you know, I'm not finished. So, and, and, and you click on his YouTube page, and he's talking about it, he's saying, look, they got American Express cards, and they love the theater. 
You ain't gonna be able to keep up with that black market. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, they say somebody, uh, uh, a lesbian, showed up at the church the next day and knocked on the door, saw a casket in the paper gap. She confronts them like she doing something, and she knocked on the door tomorrow. I'm here to be stoned. So he wasn't there, so the guy that answered the door said, well, the fast ain't here today, so it won't be today. <laughs> oh, but they look at that like a courageous act, like she's going to lay her life down. You know, for what she's doing secretly. <laughs> you know, so so that's what's out there, and that's what they pumping that. If you oppose this, we gonna come right to you, and we gonna tell you you stole me. We got to know how to answer that. I ain't the one gonna stone. Nah, right. I'm gonna read, but I'm about to throw a few of these scripts at you. <laughs> and when they hit you about the neck and shoulder blades, right. You don't know me. Right. <laughs> Let's get it done. First Samuel chapter 21, verse 1. Uh, what you got, you got? Yeah, go ahead, sister. Um, I want to know what's the difference from uh, the man that blacked out with the sticks and he was stoned for that? Why, you know? Numbers 15, you speak of. Yeah. Numbers 15, the Lord told him on the sixth day, he got twice as much. And right. he decided to say, later for doubling up on the sixth day, I'm going to go out there on the Sabbath day anyway and give me some sticks. Mm. Mm. Right? And the Lord said, you know what? Brick him. Brick him. But that is disobedience. That's what it was. And then at the end, and then right after that, yeah, yeah. that's when he commanded Israel to uh, put on fringes. They can look on it and remember the word of the Most High. Yeah. But that's why he was brick and stone because he told the whole nation on the sixth day double up. I mean, it was sticks because the scripture said you can't kindle a fire on the Sabbath. But if right. you had the fire going, all you had to do was add wood to it. That's right. You just kept the fire going. But you weren't supposed to be working and start a fire. Right? Right. So the Lord said double up on the Sabbath. On the sixth day, get double the sticks. That way you have enough. He stay, he, you know, he scratch, he yawn, and say later for the commandment of the Lord, and then he get caught out there because he got cold. He went on out there and tried to grab some sticks on the seventh day, and the Lord wanted to brick him. Get him out of here. Uh, and the person he speaks of as well is on the Sabbath. A lot of times, y'all, look, we got more month than money. So you waiting on payday. Yeah, you would have liked to bought before the Sabbath uh, uh, got into uh, into the Sabbath uh, uh, time frame, but you couldn't at that point. But repent, but just don't start practicing. I'm just going to buy late. But the Most High still opened that door of mercy and saying, look, when it comes down to it, if the baby ain't got no pounds, you can't wait till tomorrow. You know, because you, you have to address those needs in hand. Do good. You may have been caught short, but if you slothful in it, ah, I get that tomorrow. And you right at the store, ah, I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> Wrong vibration. Wrong vibration. Mean. And we learn, we learn from that example, because all these things are examples. We learn from that example. Only that way up. Prep for the Sabbath day. That's right. Right? Don't have this spirit. Oh, I go out there and do it then. To the best of your ability, you prep. And if you know certain things come up, because they will come up. Especially you got a little baby, they will come up. You feel? It's lawful to do good, but to the best of your ability, prepare. That's right. Like we prepare to enter to the Lord's rest. The new Jerusalem. There still remains a what? A rest for who? The children of God. That's right. So even though this is a rest day, it's a foreshadowing of when we finally rest from all our toil and trouble. Yeah, let's get this though out. First Samuel 20 Samuel, chapter 21, verse 1. Yeah. Then came David to know to Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech, the priest, The king hath commanded me a business and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of this of the business whereabout I send thee, and what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and and such a place. Saul was actually trying to kill David at this mm. time. Mm -hmm. Alright, so David ran across the priest. 
All right, come on, bro. Now, therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common, there is no common bre bread under my hand, mm. but there is hollow bread. Mm. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, so they can so so they can eat this bread as long as they haven't been or touched or been physical, intimate with a woman. Why? Leviticus chapter 12 goes into the cleansing of Leviticus 15. That's right. After you become intimate, which is significant of a That's man right. and woman, you're under you go to a period of uncleanness until the evening. To the evening. That's right. So it's like, look, y'all can eat this, but have any of y'all been with women? Right. Because it's hollow bread, sacred bread. All right, come on, brother. And not only let me say this too, that these, when he said there was no common bread, after the hollow bread been sent out for the priest, what don't eat becomes common bread. Yeah. yeah. And the rest of the people kind of, you kind of, can, everybody else can kind of eat the common bread before it's stale out. But he said, ain't no common bread left. We just got the holy bread. Y'all look up the video. Get some history on that. Just look up these scriptures I'm posting now. The video is 24, 5 to 9. And Exodus 29 goes to that bread that was in that tower. Or that temple. All right, go ahead, bro. Verse 5. And David answered the priest and said unto him, of the truth, of a truth, women have kept us, kept from us about these three days. David have been a lord. Like, look, I know at least been 72 hours. Mm. Ain't nobody touched a woman for 72 hours. All right, come on, bro. Since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in matter common, yet, yeah, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. Mm. So the priest gave him hollow bread, for there was no bread there but the show but the show bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. All right, that's it for that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And that's what Christ was talking about. When he was like, you ain't never read about when David ate the show bread, which is only lawful for the priest to eat. That was an example of mercy right there. Lord, ain't gonna have you out there banging the, the war of God, you hungry. And the only bread around is bread for the priest that you can't eat. That's right. Mercy. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, my question is that, uh, like, establishing the timeline as far as, I always wondered why David got to do that. Was it, like, you know, David was eventually king, uh, but not at this point. So, was it something with David? Established, he was okay, like there was made allowance, or it was just. It was, a, it was a situation of mercy. Right. It was mercy. That bread was only for the priest. Okay. But David was banging for the Lord. Yeah. Well, and it was time to eat. That's what I was right. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a situation where, okay, this is more mercy slides in. Right. Um, you feel me? The Lord ain't gonna let his boys starve and his men starve. Been banging for it. But there is some bread up there that the priest can eat. But there are still stipulations. He's still, oh, I was just going to say. He's still stipulated. Now, no, wait, he's still stipulated. So, he's still stipulated. 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 He's you ain't no priest, you don't get to eat. When they ain't ate in three days, they gonna die. They don't care about none of that. <laughs> Following the law of the Lord. There was no compromise. Neither were there compromised with Moses when, when the Lord said, I allow Moses for y'all to divorce y'all wives for any cause. There was no compromise with that because it's lawful that that may happen in a bad marriage. That, that's lawful, but the reason I'm doing this is because y'all was turning them out. So rather than turn them out into the streets like that, I allowed y'all just to put them away then to dog them out. So it's still lawful, but there's some mercy in there because everything ain't expedient at that time. Everybody's lifestyle or what goes on in this man's house is different from this man's house. Mm -hmm. So it's still lawful, and the only compromise going to be to stretch the law out till you can get to the point of where you understand because you ain't going to do unrighteousness with this law regardless. Mm. So if David had a said, well, 
These three got busy last night. It's only me. David would have been the only one eating bread. They wouldn't have superseded that law if it hadn't been some dilly guy. All right, let's get this. First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. One over judgment and mercy of the most act. You feel me? Showed me even then when they call the Old Testament, the Lord showed himself mercy. Plenty of times. Plenty of times. All right, let's get it done, bro. Verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication that is not so much as named among the Gentiles, mm. that one should have his father's wife. I know you say it's reported commonly. Mm. Right. This is what this is the news that's on the wire. Mm. Y'all sleeping with your father's wives. Mm. What is that? What you call that for? I am I am now back coin that phrase. Right. right. You see that? Now I know he called that fornication. So who knows why I can go read Leviticus and chapter 20, Leviticus 18. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Fire it off. Oh, it? <laughs> you can go and rubbing on his chin with confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew the question was coming. <laughs> Just shout that question over there that he proved. But Leviticus, the 20th chapter, and the 18th chapter, going to the unlawful sexual acts. This right here is one of them. Laying with your father's wife, whether it be your mama or your stepmom. I'm covering your father's niggas. That's, That's what right. it's called. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now, I know he say this is reported commonly, so this is one of, one of the main problems in Corinth was men was laying with their daddy's wives. Mm. And see, that's why it's called a curse word, because when you did it, a curse was pronounced on you. Curse be he that lies with his father's wife. So if you lie with your father's wife, then you are having relations with your mother, whether it's natural or stepmother. Exactly, exactly. You know, so you will call a mother for unlawful carnal knowledge. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> check this out. And, and notice he said, Y'all acting worse than these Gentiles. Right. Mm. Come on, brother. Verse 2. Verse 2. And ye are puffed up, mm. and have not rather more, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. See, so he's talking about judgment here. Mm. See that? How y'all puffed up and men laying with y'all daddy's wives? Uh -oh. right. Ain't no mourning. Ain't no begging the Lord for mercy. We didn't trip. He said, y'all carrying on as if y'all ain't do nothing wrong. Nothing's happening. Do what you want to do. See, whenever that vibration around, you know you're in the midst of Satan. Sure. <laughs> now you get there and sure. do what you want to do. You know then, again, yeah, something ain't right around here. Right. All right, come on, bro. Verse 3. <laughs> yeah. For I verily, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, mm. as though I were present. Concerning him that has so done this deed. So, so look at he say after so many reports, because it's reported commonly. Like I ain't there physically, but man, I've already judged that didn't happen. Y'all doing that. Y'all doing that. Why he ain't put away for a month? See, too much too much mercy. You like, oh bro, this all good. That's right. You hear me? But the Lord say, what? Uh-uh. You supposed to mark him, get him a her. That's right. You feel me? He can't come back around here until he get himself right. That's right. See? So no, we can't grip the brother of the Leviticus 18. Tell you what, you worthy of death if you do that. What we do, man? You gotta get some around her with that. <laughs> you can't be around her, you look up there to be a doctor. Hey, y'all, give me right. step on. Give me your right. mom. Right. Alright, come on, brother. Verse 4. Yeah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. To deliver such and one unto Satan mm. for the destruction. Hold on, deliver such a one to who? Satan. Mm. For the destruction of the flesh, mm. that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord oh, man. Jesus. So hold on, so what would that mean? Right. You mean <laughs> you can drop people off on Satan front step? Right. right. What that mean? Who know what that means? What it mean to deliver somebody to Satan? Mm. For the destruction of the flesh, the point of mind, the spirit might be saved. You know what that means? What example do we have in the scriptures? Huh? Tell him, bro. He's like, tell him. He don't have to. You know y'all the reason 
Valley do this a lot, y'all, because we, we need to make sure we just not sitting here. Yeah. You know, if we doing the same thing we were doing at church, then it's going to be the same result. Mm -hmm. So, y'all, when he asks questions like this, y'all, we a body, y'all. ain't us up in teach. If, if y'all ain't getting it, y'all can't tell it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't tell it, you can't keep it. That's right. So, that's why it's not putting nobody on front street. It's just like, right. hey, are we paying attention in here or are we just coming to see a reed shaking in the wind? Right. Right. Now, praise from Matthew uh, chapter 10. Y'all write that down. Matthew 10 chapter. He's giving the disciples uh, explicit orders when they go out and teach. Right, and he say, whoever gonna receive your testimony, do what? Shake the dust off your feet, then what he say? Mm. You don't need more towel before Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. Right. And they judge that it'll be for whoever don't receive this gospel. Right. Right. And we just read about Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Mm. See that? So basically, that's you taking your hands up off of them, basically. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Washing your hands and shaking your dust off and keeping it moving. And they say, look, if you don't get that together, it'll be better. It'll be Better for Sodom and Gomorrah than they judge. That's right. They didn't be for him. That's what we need to deliver somebody unto Satan. They don't mean go kill him. Some brothers teach that. That mean go kill him. Drop him off on Satan's front step. That ain't what they right. mean. Right. <laughs> that mean shake the dust off your feet. You feel me? Keep it pushing because he's down unless he repent anyway. That's right. He's Thank done. You. All right, let's finish it, brother. Verse 6. Yeah. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Good question. We got a brother that quote that all the time. That's right. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Little leaven leaven the whole yeah. lump, but trip off how serious that is. A little bit of wickedness will destroy this whole body. Yeah. Right? So we, we, we be talking about judgment right here. Not killing somebody and sending them to the judgment, but you know what? Uh, discerning between what's right and what's wrong. You feel me? And being vanguard of what's going on. You got to. If not, it'll be a free fall. Everybody in here will be taking a father's one. No. All right, come on, brother. Verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may, may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Yahweh Shai Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So it calls the Messiah the Passover, not the Easter Bunny. That's right, bro. The Lion of Judah, not the tag berry, but he just said he's dead. He said Christ is our Passover and right. sacrifice for us. Right? Next verse, brother. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us do what? Keep the feast. This is Paul's letter to the Corinthians. This is not in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Let us keep the feast. Come on. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's how you're supposed to be keeping the feast. That's right. Knowing that the Lamb is Christ, unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, not the leaven of bad doctrine, right? And not eating the bread of wickedness and malice. Don't be in the Lord's pass over wickedness on your mind. Because you could eat damnation to yourself. That's right. All right, come on, brother. Verse 9. Yeah. I wrote unto you an epistle, in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. Fornicators again, if y'all want to know the definition for it. Some of y'all may be accused of fornicating and ain't fornicating. That's right. Go to Leviticus the 20th chapter and Leviticus the 18th chapter. Those are the do's and don'ts when it comes to sexual relations. That's what the can I say uh, piggyback on that. When they're speaking right there, it's kind of speaking of spiritual because they you spiritually. It's always both, yeah. Okay. yeah you're spiritually whoring to another God. That's right. right. And you married. Now, within us being married to him, you know what I'm saying, you're getting down with somebody else. That's right. That's not that's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when you read Leviticus chapter 20, the first thing you talk about is spiritual fornication, even before it began to even think of talking about physical fornication. This thing is way spiritual than it is corn. Right. No doubt. You heard that? And then the scriptural verification is wisdom of Solomon 14. That's right. The dividing of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication. But fornication, unlawful sexual intercourse is definitely spiritual. You're dealing with another God, you're, you're a fornicator mm. in the spirit. So when you're in violation of chapter 20 Leviticus 18, you're physically in violation of fornication. So notice he said, I wrote to you in, a, in, a, in an epistle, a letter, not to company with fornicators. Mm. You ain't even supposed to, hey, that's my buddy old pal, that's my partner. 
I mean, company with them. That don't mean you ain't gonna know them. You feel me? But you're not supposed to be in fellowship with them. Meaning you're not gonna be partaking of what they do. It's just what it is. Bro has something that will come to you. Go ahead, y'all. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 5 9 talks about sexual immorality. So that's what the point is. If fornication was sex, then it'd be one. But you see, it's a difference. Like what? Right. First Corinthians 5 again? 5 9. I said the immorality mm -hmm. part. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. when it started out in verse 1, talking about men laying with their fathers' wives. Right. You know what I'm saying? But brother was talking about the spiritual fornication as well. Because you could not be in violation of them in the physical acts, but still be a fornicator to the Lord. That's right. For instance, Esau, Hebrews chapter 12, he was called a fornicator because he rejected the covenant of God. That's right. Profane and vain. Mm. And that had nothing to do with sex at all. Right, and if you drop down, uh, when we go down, get down to verse 11, it says... Let's I, read I, it. Let's, let's read it. We right here. Right. <laughs> let's read it. So I'm clearing itself right up. Right. The, word, the, the word don't need no help. Yeah. Right. Verse 10. Yeah. <laughs> Yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, uh -huh. or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. Uh -huh. You might as well be part of the world. Stay in the world. What you talking about you a new creature in Christ for? Mm -hmm. For what? Come on, bro. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother. Called a who? A brother. A brother. Come on. Be a fornicator or a covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard. Or what? Or a drunkard. See, you can drink, but you're not supposed to be getting drunk. That's right. You're not supposed to be known, you know what I'm saying, for just every time you see you, you uh, tilting that bottle back. That's right. <laughs> and stumbling it and peeing on yourself. Right. <laughs> I ain't supposed to be out of it. You're supposed to be mature enough to handle and know you left. That's right. 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 So my mind. Come on, brother. Or an extortioner uh -huh. with such and one no, not to eat. And extortion is somebody that take your money by the illegal use of authority. Mm -hmm. Possibly. You see that? When well, we just read in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. yeah. And extortion. Right. There's an example of that now when we talked about you last week where the came to uh, Illinois feels that if you are a billionaire, I want 3% of your money to go to this fund for education. Mm -hmm. Just because you're a billionaire, he wants you to pay extra 3% of your money to go to education in Illinois. Wow. Well, they're going to have to be forced. Yeah, they're going to have to be forced. I'll be like, no. Come on, listen. They're trying to be forced. Jack Nye, what's up, bro? Yeah, uh, they even go for the, uh, a person that's following the curriculum of the white guy beating his way you have blowing in the wind. Yeah, that's enough guy. That's enough guy. Yeah, that shit's uh, 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 